Hi, my name is Eric DeWitt, and I'm here to talk to you today about the International Brain Laboratory's uh, behavioral data set that will be made available to you for the Neuromatch Academy projects. I'm a member of the IBL, or the International Brain Laboratory, and I'm also a research associate with the Fundação Champalamo in Lisbon, Portugal. Let me say one or two words about the International Brain Laboratory. We're a group of experimentalists and theorists working together in a large-scale collaboration comprised of many individual groups. We have chosen a common task, and we are exploring that task behaviorally and using neuropixels to record from the entire brain. We hope to build advanced theoretical models that describe the behavior and the neural data and the relationships between them. You can learn more about the International Brain Laboratory at our website, internationalbrainlab.org. The paper that describes the data set that is being presented is available on BioArchive, and you can also see the analyses used to produce that paper, which are available on our GitHub. So, the task that uh, we've selected is a two-alternative force choice detection task. It's learned through an automated training protocol, and difficulty is controlled by varying the contrast of a Gabor stimulus. Choices are made by moving a wheel, and after the core task is learned, we introduce blocks where the stimulus is presented with a bias, either being probably on the left or probably on the right, 80% on the left or 20% on the left. And these blocks are presented without, uh, changed without any signal uh, using a constant hazard. This is the rig, which we use to collect the behavioral data. The animal is head fixed. We have a high-speed video camera and a single screen, and the mouse sits over a wheel. This is the automated uh, training procedure. So the animals are implanted, recover, water restricted, habituated to interactions. And then there are the two training stages. The first training stage, the stimulus probability is 50-50, and we gradually increase the number of contrasts that are being used. And in the second training stage, we introduce the bias blocks. And then there's a final training stage where we habituate them to the neuropixels recording rig. So this is the task. The animals sit facing the screen and a stimulus appears. They then have to move the wheel, which is in closed loop, to move the stimulus to the center of the screen, at which point they receive a water reward. If they move the stimulus off the screen, the same number of visual degrees of shift, they will receive a noise burst and a small timeout. This is what the behavior looks like. Uh, you can see the mouse moving the wheel in closed loop with the stimulus. There's an audible beep when the stimulus is appearing on the screen because when it's low contrast, they may not be able to see it very well and the animal receives its water through a lick spout um, placed comfortably in front of it. This is what the within task uh, trial dynamics look like. First, there's a pre-stimulus quiescence period where the mouse must not move the wheel, then the tone indicating that the choice time is available and the stimulus should be on the screen. The animal gets to decide and they can take their own time, so it's a reaction time or response time task. They receive a water reward or the noise burst when they end the wheel movement. And then there's an extended period of time, if it's an incorrect trial, a small timeout. So during the first stage of learning, the contrasts are gradually introduced, and we measure their performance by looking at the number of lapses or the performance for the easy, high contrast left and right stimuli and the slope of the psychometric curve. And then after they have reached a criteria, we add the stimulus prior blocks, so 80% right and 80% left, and we wait to see that their uh, bias estimated by the psychometric curves is shifting, showing that they are responding to those blocks. For the data set that's associated with the paper, we had 129 mice across nine labs with over 3 million choices, almost 4 million. And now uh, we're preparing uh, a new set, and I, I guess the numbers from April or March, we have about 200 mice, still across nine labs, and almost six million choices. And there are two mechanisms to access this data. 
One is via DataJoint, which is an open source framework for data analysis pipelines. And the other is O&E, uh, the Open Neurophysiology Environment. It's a standard uh, and a query system that the IBL is developing. It's also compatible with Neural Data Without Borders. So um, you can think of it as a similar system, but this has some advantages which you can read about if you're interested. Uh, so the IBL behavioral data set will include all of the information you need to do interesting behavioral analysis on this very large data set, the stimulus on time, the choice of the animal, what the contrast was on the left or the right, the feedback, etc. If you'd like more information on data joint and O&E, um, you can look at data.internationalbrainlab.org, which describes accessing the data joint system and how to use it. Though the, the description there is general, we're going to provide you with a single login for uh, Neuromatch students. You can also use O&E, which allows you to either use local data or um, uh, access it via um, Figshare. Uh, and so there are links that will be made available. We're also going to produce example CoLab notebooks, which will uh, make this uh, much easier to see and access and demonstrate how you can do simple queries on the data. Note that our data set includes information on things like the uh, lab the animal came from, the gender of the animals. So you can also do interesting analyses on uh, variation across animals uh, when they were trained and, and so on. It's a quite rich data set. Finally, let me uh, present the behavioral working group. These are the people who helped to standardize the task and the rig, um, learn and develop the automated training system and collect the data set. And this is actually not even most of the IBL. And there are many other people who've contributed, but I wanted to acknowledge them because they're the core group that's been working on this data set. Thank you and enjoy the data.